Oi friends, welcome to my daily update video. Great to have you here. Hey, in a moment, I want to share some thoughts on how do we live from the perfect rest of God and how do we kill striving and the hustle culture that the world will try to put upon us. But, uh, it's great to be here with you today. I'm in one of my favorite cafes in the world. Having an Americano because I am an American. Hey, before we jump into this teaching, let me give you three quick announcements. Number one, please do uh, consider hitting the subscribe button, whatever you're watching this, on YouTube, podcasts, social media, all of those good things. Uh, secondly, do uh, subscribe for our email newsletter. It goes out every Friday. Lots of news, books, different things, travel. Uh, I'll be taking a team to Ireland in the month of May, so details about that on my website as well. There are still places available for that. Lastly, let me mention my ministry school. I have an online ministry school, ministryschool.net. We have individual courses you can take. There's about 300 videos there now. And also a private mentoring group, monthly mentoring group that you can join. Uh, join us on a Zoom call live, interact. We have a curated monthly list of videos and PDF downloads for that group. Uh, that group costs $35 US a month, but there's a trial month one month's trial for five dollars so check out all the links below for those good things good let's talk about hustle um you know i was thinking this before and uh track with me for a few moments but um you know it's interesting we live in a very interesting culture we live in a very transitional culture we live in a culture that's changing and in so many ways, maybe we forget this, but we are so blessed in our culture. I know the suffering, I know people are going through hard times right now. I'm not minimizing that, but we really are so blessed. You know, really throughout nearly all of human history, most people did one job for all of their lives, never really left probably the average person more than five or 10 miles from where they were born. Um, frankly, had very little resource, very little disposable income, very little entertainment, very little communication. And we've got a million times, billion times more choice, more things available to us. I get to travel to different countries and often, you know, do all kind of glorious things as many of you do. And um, again, we have the advantage in many ways. Again, just check with me here though. I was thinking this earlier. You know, I think a lot of people though crave for a simpler life. And one, one thing about that farmer a hundred years ago, or maybe that person working in a factory, you know, or doing, um, if you will, a much simpler job, simpler lifestyle, is they probably had to think a lot less about what they do. And I, I've been thinking about that recently. Most of the people I know, it's certainly true of ministry, it's true of people in business, it's true of bringing up kids these days, it's true of everything. I see people everywhere who kind of bought into this hustle culture. This idea that we need to work like 30 hours a day and constantly have new things going and be doing this. And it's like we're competing with each other and going on Instagram and posting photos of how amazing our lives are. And uh, it's so easy to get into this rat race. And I've discovered often as Christians, we can get into that same thing again. And I want to be clear there, I think God wants us to be diligent. God wants, God calls us to do certain things, wants us to work hard, to be diligent, to stretch our faith and believe him for things and move forward, amen. But here's my main point for you today. God doesn't want you to live from a place of hustle. God wants you to live from a place of rest. God doesn't want you to live from a place where you're like constantly bouncing around, trying to get more, trying to do things. God does not want us to live in a, with a mindset that says, when I've got this, when I come to this place, when I arrive here, when I arrive there, then my life will be happy. God wants you to be at perfect rest in Him right now. I want you to be perfectly happy in Him right now. God wants you to be perfectly satisfied in Him and with Him right now. Hallelujah. How do we do that? Uh, let me give you three quick, key, three quick keys. <laughs> Number one, <clears throat> I actually think we need to see through the lie of that kind of, I'll call it hustle culture today, that rat race. We need to look at it and actually realize you can't win. It's a race you can't win. 
you can't earn enough money, you can't get enough Instagram followers or whatever that might be, you can't get enough people in your church, you can't get enough orders in your business, you can't get enough kids at college and, you know, perfect life thing to make you feel happy. Yeah, God wants you to be satisfied in Him, not with, you know, the multitude of the things you possess, whether they be material things or immaterial things, digital things, whatever. And it's actually really good to look through that, to actually see the lie of something. One of the ways, biblically, that we went over temptation is by actually looking at temptation and realizing, you know, I really won't be that happy if I eat this thing, drink this thing, engage in this relationship, don't do this thing, whatever that is. It's actually good to look through something. Yeah, that's true. And to see that, um, you know, those things won't make you happy. And there is a, there's like a carrot that gets dangled before you in temptation, where if you were the lie says, if you will do this, there will be a payoff here. And I just want to encourage you, take the time and think through that. There's no payoff with that hustle thing. The payoff is in Jesus. And right now, today, whatever day you're watching this video on, I believe you can step into the fullness. You can arrive today. I've made it. I've totally made it in my life. If I never do another thing, I've arrived because I am complete in Him, Colossians 2 verse 10. So, come on, key number two, we, we've already arrived in Jesus Christ. We've settled. Jesus, the Bible says Jesus sat down. He ascended on high and he sat down. Why is he sat down? Is he tired? Well, no, he sat down because the work is finished. He sat down because everything has been done. There's nothing left to do. He sat down because, hallelujah, everything has been accomplished. But here's what I want you to catch you, step number two. You need to receive that by faith and not by feeling. If you wait to feel or have an emotion that you've been um, utterly satisfied, you won't get there. But what we've got to do is, by faith, appropriate the promises of God. In the same way we read in the Bible, He's our Savior. We reach out by faith and receive that salvation. We believe He's our healer. And we reach out by faith and receive that place of healing. In the same way, we can reach out and receive that place of peace, of rest, Hallelujah. You can do it today. And uh, you can step into that place that says, Lord, I'm completely satisfied in Him. The first church I ever attended in the UK had a big scripture along the, uh, the platform. He satisfies the longing soul. Mm, he satisfies the longing soul. By faith, you can appropriate that verse today. Hey, the third key is really this. How do we practice that life? Um, God wants you to see the lie of that hustle thing, amen. Number two, he wants you to, by faith, appropriate that place of rest. But then you've got to practice it. You've got to learn to live it out. The Bible said the outward man perishes, you know, but the inward man is renewed day by day. And how do we maintain that walk of peace and rest? I think it's actually quite simple, but what we need to learn to do is to thank God for it every day, not try to work at getting back in there, if we lose it, what we've got to do is hold that place of faith and live a life of rejoicing, live a life of peace, live a life of whatever things are good, lovely, praiseworthy, virtuous, think on these things. We need to live a life of practicing that life of rest. And at times, like all things, Satan's going to tempt you on it and try and drag you back to that rat race, hamster wheel situation. Practice saying no. Practice the peace of God. I believe we can learn to bring ourselves into the experience of the peace of God in about five seconds. <laughs> it may take you a little longer at first, but the more you do it, you practice His peace, you practice His presence, and that'll be an incredible blessing to you. Boom. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll be back every day with another video. We do these as audio podcasts as well, if that's easier for you. Again, uh, three quick reminders. Hit the subscribe button wherever you're at. Do sign up for our email newsletter, link below. And uh, do check out ministryschool.net with our monthly private mentoring group. It would be a real blessing to you. Uh, if anybody's interested, as I mentioned earlier, I have places left on my May 2023 trip to Ireland. So thanks for watching. Bye for now.